do another through the Bible. This is the last through the Bible. We're going over the New Testament. You're yelling. And learning why the books are in the books. The books are make up the book, the Testament. Whoa. And who decided that these books should be there and why and when and put them in chrono, not chronological order. We're going to put them in order of date written. All right. How many books are in the New Testament? Lost. 28. No. No. 38. No. 27. Yes. 27 books. What are the... One, two, three, four. Four main lit genre categories of the books. Yes. What's one of them? Yes. Okay. So that would make up one main category. What do we call that? The gospel. So the, the historical... The, the, the Gospels would be one literary category. What makes up the Gospels? What makes them Gospels? What does Gospel mean? Well, the story of Jesus' life is what the Gospels are. Yes. The story of Jesus' life from four different perspectives. Um, one, a student asked me the other day, it's like, they thought it was like part one, part two, part three, part four. Oh. Like that's what they assumed the Gospels, you know, like a movie quadrilogy. But they're actually all pictures of his whole life but different pieces. Like Mark doesn't have anything about his birth and, and some are like birth to death. Anyway, they're all four different perspectives of the same timeline story, right? Um, so the, the Gospels, I've had another question. Oh yeah, what does Gospel mean? God's sins paid. God, our sins paid everyone. No, <laughs> no that's, a, that's Dare to Share's abbreviation. Anybody but Jessica? Jessica. Good news. Good news, okay? So this is good news. You guys... If you remember, so we, if you pause, you guys have to know this. Yeah. What like, does the gospel mean? Everyone say it together. Good news. It's good news. So when we share the gospel, we're sharing. Good news. Because they're not having them to be cursed to death in hell. Why? Yeah, it's good news because it's a free gift of eternal life. It's like, good I news. Free There's free donuts yes. downstairs. It's not free juice. But this is way better, right? Okay. 27 books. Four are the Gospels. What's next? Acts. Acts. History. Yes. It's a history it. book. Oh. You could also kind of say okay. the Gospels are kind of narrative history, so categorically, but because they get their own category, because they're the Gospels. Acts is our only historical book. It does cover a lot of the New Testament timeline, not the whole thing. But what, is it, what does it stand for? What does Acts mean? Like, is it a chopping acts of wood? The apostles. It's the oh. Acts of the Apostles. So it's the things that the Apostles did. It's their actions, okay? So it's the historical book of Acts. Who's got the blue tape? Who's got the blue tape? Can you toss it this way? Um, yeah. oh. That's a good oh. What That's would be know. next? As you see on the board, there's 21 of them. What would be the, the genre? Ellie. Epistles. Epistles. What is Letters. epistle? What's another word for epistle? Letters. Letters. 21 different letters. Now, there are some there are three category categorical breakdowns of the letters. You could write down. What? Seven hundred twenty-six letters. Oh yeah, it's twenty-six letters. Oh letters of the alphabet. Um so twenty-one different letters. What are, any guesses on the three different types of letters we have? What's written by Paul is one of them. Pauline letters, yes. So if you have a girl and you want to name her Paul, you just call her Pauline. Or, or how, how I'm breaking them down specifically, Paul's, Paul's letters to churches, there's nine of them, okay? Do so you have a subcategory for that? Oh, man, I do. If I broke it down by Paul's letters to churches, what's another category? Paul's letters to churches. Paul's letters to? People groups. No, individuals. Yeah. So individuals. Tim, you're right. You're on the right track. So Timothy is one of those individuals. There's four of them. So 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy. What's another letter to an individual? Titus, Titus Philemon. and Philemon. So Paul wrote four letters to individuals. So they get a different category. He's not written to a group of people. So that is kind of a different style because you're just like... I guess it's Paul's letters. Paul's letters. Okay, I do have to write Paul's letters. So Paul's letters to churches, there's nine of them. Paul's letters to individuals, 
or also known as the pastoral epistles, because he's kind of writing them as a pastor to an individual. Four of them. All right, one more category of letters. There's eight of them. Under Henry? The okay. What? Prophetic. No. no. no one, one, more, one more category of letters. Oh. The other one, you're not. Kai? Like they're prophetical? No. That is, that's the next category. Apoc no. no. The ca one more category of letters. Oh. Okay? You guys are moving on. Yes. Right. <laughs> so there's some there's no. eight other letters that weren't written by Paul. General. We call them general epistles. So what are some of those? Who wrote some of the general epistles? Peter. Well, we don't know. Peter. Peter said John in the sailboat. Peter no. wrote first and second James. Peter. James. Peter and John. John. James. No. Well, John wrote three letters. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Peter I was thinking and the John gospel. And John. Peter's James. Peter, James, Hebrews. and John. But that's a different James. Hebrews. Oh. Hebrews. We don't know the author. Um, Titus? No, that's a letter to Titus. That's a letter to Titus. So there's Wait, the Peters, Jude, Jude. Jude. The Peters, the James, the, uh, the Peters, the Timothy's? John, the James, the Jude, the Hebrews. Yeah, I think that's eight right there. Timothy's a letter to Timothy. That's Paul's pastoral yeah. epistle to Timothy. All right, but the, many people got this last category. Yes. One more book of the New Testament that you all brought up already. What's the category? Prophetic. Prophetic. Prophetic, also faith, Correct. Um, apocalyptic is another, could be category of the book of Revelation. So there's only one real prophetic book. This one's so um, There's lots in the Old Testament, right? There's the prophets. There's, I mean, Daniel has prophecy in it. But only really one in the New Testament, the book of Revelation. Okay, so that makes up 27 books of the New Testament. Um, how did we get these books? How did we say, you know, that? The, did you know? That there's other Gospels? There's a Gospel of Thomas out there. There's um, other letters. There's other writings that happened during this time. How did we decide? There's a book of Enoch. Yeah, that was Old Testament. There's a book of Enoch. We talked about that in youth group. No, we talked about that with Jude, right? Yeah, Jude. Okay, here's some other Old Testament books that people put in. Um, how did we decide that these 27, you okay? I, I thought I was turning it off, but I actually turned it on more. Go away. How did we decide that these 27 books of the Bible were books of the Bible, that these 27 were inspired by God, others were not? What are... Hippo? What? Oh, yeah. Hippo. Yeah, oh. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So. It's a lot to write. I was getting ahead. Mom, Justin got ahead. Mom, I'm not, they had ahead. things called councils, Okay. What is a council? People seeing together and talking. Like a group of men. Talks. People who got together and decided. Now, does that seem very biblical? And look at the dates. What are the dates of these councils? 397 and 300. So that's like 350 years after Jesus. Like 300 years after most of these books were written. Okay. Does that seem weird to you guys? That 300 years later, they still haven't decided what's in the Bible? Yeah, that doesn't seem weird? No, it's not weird because they didn't to have me. too many copies. They didn't so have too many copies? Everyone right. had their because, own copy of a Bible. Because at this time, they're losing all the witnesses and secondary witnesses. Right. So they're getting into, we need to organize this and get it where people can read it. Yes. So, Henry's exactly right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. No. Uh, <laughs> In the early church times, people like um, the Apostle John was still around, right? People like many of the disciples and apostles, people that had heard Jesus' teaching. They leave, Paul was still around. These letters were being written as letters. So, so they lived like 400 years old? No. I'm saying in the first century. So the first hundred years after Jesus, right? Roughly. So there were eyewitnesses to Jesus' ministry. You go to the next century, there are people still alive who knew the disciples and apostles, right? Fast forward another hundred years, there's people who knew people who knew, right? So you're getting further and further away from eyewitnesses of Jesus' ministry. Then it becomes starts, starts to become very important to ratify and set what 
books are, are authoritative. You also, in this time, started having things get written that were false. Like the, the Gospel of Thomas I mentioned was written about this time. Do you think Thomas wrote it? Yeah. <laughs> no. So people were making fakes, right? Fan fiction. Fan fiction. Oh, uh, people were making awesome. other things, other gospels, other stories about Jesus were starting to be spread around. So it became an issue later. In the beginning, you had these eyewitnesses. You had like, yeah, Paul wrote that letter. I remember my grandpa talked about it. Like you had a, a closer connection to it. Or earlier, earlier on, you're like, Paul wrote this letter. He's over in Rome. Like he was still alive. John, oh, I heard he got exiled to the island of Patmos. Look, he wrote this crazy letter of Revelation. You know, like it sent it to seven churches. Like that was all happening. So this all happened later. It's not weird. It's not it's nothing we're trying to hide about. Like, like this was made up and, and hidden. This is the, how the process evolved. God, I think, used this process. God showed things to these men. Now, there are one, two, three, four, five categories that these councils decided on that would determine if a book was allowed to be in what we're calling the canon, okay? What does canon mean? It just means like the set books that decided, what does it mean? Oh, a measuring stick or rod. Thank you, Ellie. Like the dis defining factors that would say what is biblical. It was used to like measure, like it was like used to like, so it's like set to measure what is in it. Like it's used to like, there's like categories to decide. Very cool. So. Okay, there's a little too much under chatter. I want you guys to Yeah. So number one, I don't think you need to write the whole definitions. I mean, are you guys, Jessica's going to write it. Oh man. Uh, so number one is apostolic, ap apostolicity. 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 Apostolicity, which is a fancy word <laughs> to like, say okay. that, Isley, this book was written by someone close to Jesus, who was chosen by Jesus to carry on the message. So a direct connection to Jesus. So written by an apostle or someone closely associated with an apostle, such as like the books of Mark. Was not, Mark was not a disciple, but... Um, he kind of wrote down, we think, what Peter's perspective, right? He was close with Peter and other disciples. Luke was not a, an apostle, but he talked to lots of people, eyewitnesses, and wrote down what they said. This also means that if the book was written in like 200 AD, do you think it would be valid? Yeah. No. 200 AD. 200 AD. After Jesus. So like, we're now, we're, we're, we're far away from anyone being alive that knew Jesus or was around Jesus or could talk to eyewitnesses anymore. So this is very important because most of the false books that were written were written much later in the 200 and 300 and going on forward AD time where people are like, dude, I could make some money. I could write some books. I could write this other book and pretend it was really old, put dirt on it and then find it and then sell it. And then I'll have story, weird stories about like when Jesus was a kid because we don't know much about that time. I'll write this, make up this story where Jesus was uh, playing hide and seek and then uh, some kid cheated and then he killed him. Like that would be crazy. Uh, <laughs> That's the Gospel of Thomas, guys. Uh, um, I should, oh, I have it. I should brought it. In the Gospel of Thomas, yes. Wait, so, wait, wait, wait. These... wait, if I were going to write a Gospel, I wouldn't be stupid enough to put that in. Well, Amen. okay. But you could seize an opportunity about a time period that wasn't written about Jesus' childhood. But you need to be smart about seizing an opportunity. No, they wanted to spread false things. Okay, and one time Jesus found... Okay, here's another story in the Gospel of Thomas. Jesus found a dead bird and like brought it back to life. Okay, now I can get on that. That was cool. But not, but not real. Um, so this became a problem. So this is one of the categories. It had to have been... Written by an apostle, someone Jesus chose to do ministry, or someone very close to the apostles at the time when eyewitnesses would have been around, and they could say, "Actually, you know, James is James. Jesus' brother would have been alive if, if the Gospel of Thomas was true." He'd be like, "Actually, yeah, that happened. I remember it." Or, "No, it didn't." Right? Once you get two, three hundred years farther away from the actual events. All you have is hearsay. You don't have any eyewitnesses around to confirm or deny. And so, so none, of, none of the books, none of the 27 books in our New Testament were written after the first century. And that's extremely important because anything else that came after that is, is potential to be 
not reliable because there's no eyewitnesses alive anymore to confirm or deny. So, first century only, connected to an apostle, someone chosen by Jesus only. Why is Paul considered an apostle? Yeah, Jesus anything out of Luke? Yeah, just yeah, he was chosen by Jesus in a vision, confirmed by other apostles who also had, like, um, the guy Ananias who healed him and stuff. It, but G- did Jesus and Paul ever meet in person in real, when Jesus was alive on earth? No. We don't see that. I don't think so. Paul writes in one of his letters that Jesus um, ministered with him and, and spent, like, it feels like months. Yeah. It's Long like, time. There's like a, a couple little sentences in Acts, no, yeah. Romans. Mm-hmm. Ellie. So this category of like apostolicity or like apostolic like succession and all this stuff was super important in, in the early church, dealing with like false teachings because their only thing that they had before even the canon was happening and there was really bad heretics, the only thing they had to know was like orthodox or like right teaching mm-hmm. was because of the, like the apostolic succession of like the apostles like having people under them and then people under them and like that line. So like apostolic like succession and the um their authority that they had was super super important because that's all they had before they had like any creeds or councils or anything like that's all they had so like the apostles like and also that's what happened you got the pope and stuff like those the apostle like that line and stuff um and bishops that was super important to their church because that's all they had to have right teaching basically. right so they would have like when they didn't have the canon of the bible where we said this is truth mm-hmm. Check anything you hear against this, like we do now, because they had, like, oh, check that with Peter. Yeah. Check that with James. And so the check line that with Paul, from right? Peter, like, they would start having, like, really, like, important people. That's what apostolic session was, and that's the only thing they had to fall back on before they had councils and creeds yeah. and the canon. Okay, well, we'll kind of buzz through the rest, um, just so you know them. But orthodoxy means that, basically... Is this Bible being taught? Is it consistent with what the church is teaching? Or is it, is it whack, right? Um, universal acceptance. Is it being accepted by a wa- ra- wide range of Christian communities? Important thing about these councils. It wasn't just like one church meeting and the leaders deciding. It, they were trying to bring all areas of faith. So the gospel had spread to different cultures and communities by this time. There was Ethiopian church. There was um, Eastern Orthodox, like Russian Christians. There was like uh, European Christians, North African Christians, Jewish Christians. All these people groups were part of these councils. So it wasn't just one group saying this is it. Um, liturgical use, that this book was read, it was part of scripture, part of church. It was taught and, and read in worship. And consistent message, the books was consistent with the rest of the Bible. The, it's very important that the Bible doesn't contradict itself because that would make it unreliable if, it's, if it had two different ideas in there. And that's the amazing thing about the Bible, why God, you know, God's involvement in it kept it so it agrees with itself. It's a consistent, amazing book. All right, last thing. The church's role was to recognize the books had already been inspired by God, okay? They weren't like, like deciding that these, they weren't picking the books and saying that these were inspired, they were just trying to rectify and ratify the books that were already included. There was no surprises when they they came out with this canon, right? They weren't like, what? I've never heard of that book. It was formally accepting the books that were already being used, already generally accepted as canon. There was nothing new. There was some debates. For example, the book of Hebrews, we've already mentioned there's no author. So what do we do with um, apostolacy when we don't know who wrote it, right? So that so some of those books were challenged like that, um, but it was determined that what? This time was the Old Testament. The Jews, basically, Um, they we went off of what they decided, and that's a different conversation. So there was some disputes, there was some disagreements, um, but they the West slowly. This was like the first ones that set the 27, and then there was other councils that also oh, accepted the it Nicaea, over time. Right? No. What's that one? I remember learning that. one was more Nicaea about the, about the Nicene Creed, Jesus, about Jesus, Jesus' Jesus' identity, oh, is he human canon. or man? No. no. Canon was Nicaea decided by Nicaea and Chalcedon are the councils of talking about Jesus' nature. Okay, we're going to watch the thing, and then we're going to do the, the, the order. Yeah, and reading the whiteboard for the order? 
Yeah. Okay. So I'll leave this up for a little bit longer. If